of my quilting friends, Leah Day here with a new video for our machine quilting block party. Today we're quilting block number five with a combination of free motion quilting and walking foot quilting. So let's get on the machine and see how this works, learning both types of machine quilting on one block. So I've gotten started in the center of my block and I have already stitched in the ditch around the center square and between each of these half square triangles. I have not stitched in the ditch around the yellow flying geese because we're actually going to ignore those seam lines. We're going to stitch right over them with our design matrix. So I'm going to get started stitching into the yellow section and filling in those rings. So just some careful travel stitching right in the ditch. I'm gonna get down to that bottom ring. And then stitch across following that marked line. And then more careful travel stitching in the ditch and hit the next ring. And again, don't worry if you accidentally stitch off the line, those lines will be erased. So it's a-okay to stitch off the lines if you do. So we have a really interesting design out here. Our wiggly lines actually connect with our curving lines in the yellow sections. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stitch to a curving orange line and then I'm gonna hop across the ditch and go straight into the yellow lines. So I'm just hopping right across the ditch and going straight into that yellow section. And my lines are fairly faint, but they're enough that I can see them and know to come up to this point right here and then rotate around and follow that line all the way back down to the seam line. It's really fun when a design connects like this because you can get a really nice flow going. So now I'm gonna stitch the straight line into the red section. And then from here, I can bounce against that center and then stitch right along the next line in the red section. And again, this is gonna to connect to lines within the yellow. And so I could just hop across and stitch through that area. And then also reconnect with my wiggly lines in the orange section. So it really is a fun flow. And I like having this one, I'm using white thread. I like having that thread color over all of these colors. It stands out enough. Even over the yellow, you can really appreciate it. You can appreciate this cool, wiggly, plus straight line design. It's a lot of different things going on here. You may notice that I'm rotating quite a bit. I'm just wanting to be able to see what I'm doing, especially over these yellow sections because they're so faint. Uh, my marking pencil didn't show up very well. And so rotating it really helps and also it just generally, my stitches I find look better when I rotate the block around, I'm able to see what I'm doing. So it's worth it to take that extra time. Okay, one last little line through the yellow, and then I'll connect with my last wiggly line in the orange. There we go. So I intentionally designed this to work this way so you could flow through that area seamlessly. As far as getting started with the next section, I'm gonna travel stitch down and reach this next orange section, go on ahead and fill in the rings and just wash and repeat, stitching through both the orange, yellow, and red sections, just flowing back and forth through those lines until it's filled completely. So I'm gonna finish this up, stitching through this just like that. Then I'm gonna change thread color and stitch that outer line, that outer curved line through the yellow sections. And I'll meet you back here when we're ready to show you that. So you can see I'm ready to start quilting this background area of the block with matrix and I have switched to my walking foot. And I really wanna encourage you, if you've been feeling frustrated with free motion, this block in particular could be quilted entirely with your walking foot. Uh, all of the designs within the center that we've already quilted are gentle curves and uh, simple straight lines. Other than the amount of rotations that you'll have to do in order to get around everywhere, 
it's definitely possible to quilt this with your walking foot. And I wanna show you how to quilt with a walking foot through this design matrix. So a few things that have changed on my machine switching to my walking foot is I have dialed up my stitch length to 1.6 millimeters. That's gonna produce a nice tight stitch that looks really good on the surface. And we need to change our stitch length because in this situation, the foot is gonna be feeding the machine and producing that consistent stitch throughout. We also, because we're using the feed dogs, we need to move our Supreme slider. I have moved this over so it's still close to the quilt but off the feed dogs completely. And that's just simply to protect it. If I had it underneath, then more than likely those feed dogs and the walking foot combined would squish it, rip it, stitch it to the back of your block. It'd be ugly, so uh, make sure to shift that off. Okay, so I've gotten started and I have stitched in the ditch uh, around the perimeter of the block between the center block and the border, and I have also started stitching around this outer curve line in the yellow section. So let me show you how this is gonna work. It's just slow and careful stitching. Once you kind of get the feel for it, and really walking foot quilting is more of just a movement back and forth with your hands this way, just making sure that whatever line you're stitching along is right in front of the foot. So that's the next thing that your needle hits. And another thing with walking foot quilting is you have to be facing in the direction that you're stitching. So it's much more, um, gentle movement with your hands, you know, just kind of almost a, just a gentle guiding with your hands and letting the machine, letting uh, the foot feed the quilt through the machine and do all the work for you. So I'm coming up on the end of my line. I'm just gonna connect with that point. And then I'm gonna start taking a look at my quilt and figuring out what is the next line I'm gonna stitch, filling in this area with matrix. And the best thing to do with this, I know it can seem a little intimidating, but the best thing to do is to default to the closest line that is to your needle. And right now, that's this line right here. So I'm just gonna match up with that line and stitch along it. And definitely feel free to put your foot down. The machine is gonna be doing the work for you. So long as your hands are kind of guiding it to keep it on that curving line, you're gonna be just fine. So you can, you can put your foot down, you can go fast if you want to. Just watch out if your machine starts making any kind of funny noises, if the walking foot uh, doesn't seem to like going super fast, slow down and, and take a, a more moderate stitch length, or speed, I should say. Whenever I'm picking the next line, I just, again, I look for the closest line to my needle, and I have this one, it's going in this direction, so that's just fine. I know it can seem intimidating to have all these lines and you know wanna figure out your path before you get started and have everything kind of planned out, but I can promise you that's far more confusing and challenging than just jump in, pick a line, stitch along it, and then pick the next closest line. In this case, I'm gonna travel stitch up along this line and hit that one perpendicular to it. And that's another thing, it is perfectly fine to travel stitch along our curves in the yellow section and along the ditches in the outer perimeter of the block. Both are A-OK -okay fine and will probably actually be a little easier for you because you're using a walking foot and the stitches are uh, spaced out so perfectly. Occasionally you might have a line, the closest line might be behind you, just rotate the block around Stitch back to it and run along it. The reason that I don't do a lot of walking foot quilting is in my head, it feels, it seems to be time consuming and it's more time consuming than free motion quilting. But in reality, I think both forms of quilting are probably about the same length of time. You might end up having to break thread more often with walking foot style quilting but that would probably be the only reason why it might take more time uh, to stitch through, to quilt through it an area. You can see I can hit and travel stitch and rotate and quilt all of these lines probably just as fast as I could do if I was using my darning foot instead, if I was doing this in free motion instead. And it's really nice when it happens like this where your line butts right into the next one, you can just rotate it around and keep on stitching. You don't have to worry about any travel stitching. That's really nice. 
Um, sometimes if you feel like being brave, you can hit your reverse. And sometimes like that, it just stitched off just ever so slightly. So it didn't do what I was wanting it to do, but you could try reversing. Most of the time I just rotate the thing around rather than potentially getting a weird stitch off by reversing stitching. But that's just another thing that's open to you. You can go forward and back. So play with your machine, you know, use this block as an opportunity to play with your machine and play with your walking foot and just see how it all works and see what you like to do. You can see I'm just always picking the closest line. And I might end up with a random line or two that's unstitched and I can travel stitch right to them and quilt along them. It's not gonna be a big deal if I miss one. I'm not worried about it, I'll put it that way. I'm not um, obsessing about that. I'm just choosing the closest path and knocking it out one line at a time. So I'd say really the benefit to using a walking foot is perfectly even stitches. And the downside is, you know, like our outer lines here, our little wiggly line design that we've been doing in the background at every block, we really can't do that with a walking foot, you know, as intensely as we could with free motion. You know, because we do a nice wiggly line design and really that's not gonna be something that I'm gonna be able to stitch with a walking foot. However, I could always modify this border design and just stitch straight lines back and forth. It'd be a lot of rotating, but that is open to you as well. If you wanna finish up the whole block with your walking foot, that is absolutely open to you. So I am just gonna continue stitching along all these lines. As you can see, it's just travel stitching carefully, rotating it around a lot to get it into the right position to hit that next line. When I can speed up, I put my foot down and speed through it. And then again, travel stitch the next one. So it is an easy process. It will get filled eventually. You might have a random line or two that you miss. And if you notice it, go back in there and stitch it. It's no big deal. So the last part of the block, I have switched back to my darning foot. So I am free motion quilting the outer border. You just wanna run right along the triangle shape. And then I've just marked dots as usual for my flame shapes. Just wiggle up, hit the dot, wiggle back. And this is what I was talking about in the walking foot section, just how this design would be really challenging to quilt with your walking foot simply because it's so wiggly and those direction changes, I'd have to be flipping my block around, you know, doing a full rotation here just to do one little one inch wiggly line. And that would get really tedious really quickly. So it's important to understand that both walking foot quilting and free motion quilting have their places. And it's great to build both skills and be able to use the two of them uh, anytime you want to stitch beautiful quilts. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed learning more about free motion quilting and walking foot quilting. If you're just getting started with this project and you'd like to join in the fun, click right here to find your block patterns at oleoday.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of the new quilting videos we have coming out every single week. Until next time, let's go quilt.